Yo, yo, what's good? How y'all doing? Hope y'all are great out there in the world. I'm going to try to get through this as best as possible. Um, honestly, I'm not feeling like myself, so we're going to try to do this. So work with me, I'll work with you and things like that. I want to make sure everything is going copacetic. We're going to take a small break from Young Thug. We're going to take a small break from um, hip hop in as far as the world's viewpoint. And we're going to step back into my life. So if you're interested, please tune in and we can learn from each other together. So if you have any questions or anything you want to talk about, please feel free. It's one of those nights where I'm willing to indulge in dialogue. So I titled this. Uh, me and my father's broken relationship part two if you watch part one if you haven't watched part one uh, please go ahead and do that on whatever time that you would like to do I won't run through it pretty I won't run through it I'll, that's a that's a long story in itself however we're gonna go ahead and get with part two so we did leave off with um, me going to college my freshman year We'll start there. So I left the house, went to college, um, pretty much did anything I could to get out of the house because of the mental strain that was being put on me from my father. Um, waking up every day to yelling. Um, night times, I'm getting my ass whooped just for existing. Um, and I wish I was exaggerating, but it just that's just how it was for me specifically. My siblings, not so much, but I took the bare brunt of everything else. Uh, his problems at work, I took the brunt of it. His problems at home, I took the brunt of it. My own problems, I took the brunt of it. So it is what it is, man. So uh, I did leave high school. Um, I wasn't an athlete my senior year because he made me quit. He later denied that, but that sucks. To, um, kind of broke me a little bit. Um, kind of hurt me a little bit to, when he lied like that. But anyway, um, so I was a regular student my senior year. Um, and I tried to get into sports still, uh, football, basketball was always my thing. My cousin's Monte Ellis. He went pro. He went to the NBA, uh, in 2005 when I was like a freshman in high school. So I always wanted to go to the NBA personally. Uh, but it turns out that I guess football was going to be more, uh, conducive to my life. So, um, after my senior year, I did a few camps, basketball camps, football camps, uh, Jackson State, things like that. Injury took a hold of my life. Um, this knee, right knee, um, and my hip. I, The first injury was dislocating my hip, which really hurt. Oh, my goodness, that hurt. Uh, <laughs> I was at Jackson State. If you know Deion Sanders, a.k.a. Coach Prom, who doesn't know him if you're in sports, he was at Jackson State last year and for a total of two and a half years. So for me, it really hit my heart. And uh, it meant something to me when he was there. I was at a Jackson State camp, and I was invited and I had a chance to pretty much walk on or get a scholarship, wherever the case was. And that's back when Rich, Rick Comedy was around. And I dislocated my hip on a non-contact play. And that was the first step to ending my athletic life. Later in life in basketball, I tore my ACL and my meniscus. And that's what broke the camel's back. And that's what took me completely out of the game. I didn't really know what to do with myself outside of sports. Um, not being an athlete um, but I didn't realize that once you're in high school that's your time to get a scholarship if you don't do it then it's you're probably not getting it so I ended up going to Mississippi State as a regular student and I never was able to do anything when I was in high school my folks wouldn't even let us go down the street it was that serious like I would get ass whoopings for driving one turn away from the house um, all the food spots, grocery stores, all that was on one street. You literally turn out the house, you make one more turn inside of whatever establishment you're trying to go into, which is literally 30 seconds to three minutes down the road. 
yes, I got ass whoopings for that. Don't 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 make me explain it. I didn't get it neither. Um, so anyway, uh, where was I? So I went to Mississippi State, regular student, still trying to do the ball of life and things like that, but that's so far gone. I'm injury prone, I guess, or body is broke up. And I enjoyed my freshman year being a regular student since I had all those injuries. Um, throughout high school, I was we were imprisoned in the home. Materialistically and financially, we were taken care of, but mentally and physically, it was a struggle for me. So when I went to Mississippi State, I just, I crashed out. Well, I didn't crash out, but I was out a lot. I had never been to a club in high school. I had never brought a girl home. I didn't do any of the things that even a child would, like small things. So when I went to college, I just acted a fool. I'm going to parties here and there and everywhere um the little they was only giving me like my folks was giving me like twenty dollars every two months it was it was the fucking worst so i would use that twenty dollars to go to club uh because like, you can't really do that with twenty dollars anyway so i was doing everything i could having fun uh when it came to classes i was in a, I was at the time i was a computer engineer major i didn't know what i was getting myself into really i knew a lot of stuff about information technology aka it basically fixing computers and stuff i thought that's what computer engineering was it's not nowhere near it nowhere near it. and if i knew that i wouldn't have done it so while being an engineer and i was partying a lot and not going to classes because when i was in high school i had a lot of good grades and it came easy in college i took it for granted my freshman year and my GPA showed for it, but I didn't fail out. I had a 2.4, then I had like a 2.3 my second semester. My folks flipped out. I lost a little grant of $250 uh, a semester. And I lied to them about my grades because I didn't want to go back home. I didn't want to go back to get my ass whooped. I didn't want to go back to the mental struggle of dealing with all this yelling. And, and when my pops yells, it's like he yells. He, when you wake up in the morning, like you'll be asleep. Living room light comes on. Why the why this? Why that? Blah blah blah. I'm talking so loud the whole house, probably the neighbors could hear. Military household type stuff. I couldn't go back to that, bro. So yeah, I lied. I did it. You know, I can't go back. Um, but it's not the end of the world. You get a 2.4, 2.3. There's a lot of kids whose parents would like kill for that. There's people out here filling out with like 0.6s and 1.2s and shit. And I got a 2.4, 2.3. I missed a total of 70 classes, like 76 classes. Um, when it came to my uh, math class, I missed like 40 classes in the first semester. Came out with a B. You know, I took a lot of stuff for granted, whatever the case is, blah, blah, blah. Still came out on top. Uh, folks didn't like that. Um, they took on, they kept the, he's a liar and a bad child narrative going on since high school, whatever. Um, didn't care about anything that I had going on mentally or what I had going on in my life. It was just all about them. Uh, they always complained about loans and that I didn't even want or financials. Even when my refund check came and went to my bank and I didn't even know what a refund check was. And I asked them, I said, yo, what's this money in my bank? And they said, oh, that's ours. And then 30 seconds later, that 2000 and something, something dollars went to zero that quick. I wish I never said nothing. Sophomore year comes around and this is when it gets interesting. <sighs> my sophomore year. So I, I somewhat learned a lesson my freshman year. Don't fuck off. So my sophomore year, I took it a little more seriously. And my folks threatened me, you know, saying we're going to remove you from Mississippi State, which was like two and a half hours from home. So me being that far from home, I'm like, y'all can't do shit. I'm here. Y'all got to take out your whole day to actually come get me, which ain't going to happen. Not back then. Not in 2010, 2009. Um, so I took it to my advantage uh, my sophomore year. I took my classes more seriously. However, my classes were so hard. It just, you know, at a PWI, they do everything they can to fail you, especially if you're black. So um, as far as my sophomore year is concerned, I ended up falling in love on accident. How that happened was I was supposed to have like this 
casual sex situation with this girl I had met. And because we didn't have protection, because I didn't have protection, I was like, we can't do this. And we started talking and getting to know each other. And it was probably a bad decision. I took the mature decision, but, you know, I got to know her more. And it really made things worse because she already had a boyfriend. So we'll get into that story another time. But to fast forward, um, I did everything I could to pass classes. I was in love. I had heartbreak going on. I had friends who were habitual liars. Like, when I say liars, I mean lie to the point to where they did it for themselves. So um, my sophomore year was a bit of a struggle. And I ended up getting pulled by my folks at the end of the year. They didn't give me a like a no heads up or nothing. I told them my grades, you know, and they was like, well, I'm glad you tried and pulled me anyway. So I had a little emotional moment to myself because I'm back in the house and I went into a depression. So now I'm at Jackson State. And I get my first job. Which was Nukes Eatery. Jackson State was too easy. Way too easy. It was high school. Um, I didn't study at all. And I came out with all A's and a B one semester and all A's and a C another semester. I loved the campus, loved the teachers, loved the students. I hated being there because I was home. So once again, as a 21-year-old, I still can't do anything. Um, I can finally drive down the street because I had to drive to college anyway. But um, with that being the case, uh, you know, I got a little taste of finally being grown. I ended up saving like three thousand to close to four thousand dollars at my job secretly behind the, my folks back. Because if you remember me telling my story in part one, my freshman year my, before I moved in, well, we moved in and then my pops pulled me back in the whip and made me a deal that I couldn't say no to. Because if I said no, he was going to send me back home. So it was either say yes or yes. So he was like, if you fuck up, we're pulling you. And if you come back to Mississippi State, we're cutting you off. And that's exactly what happened. I went to Jackson State. I was doing well. They were so happy I was doing well. They don't care about the things that I want. They care about the things that they want. And because I was doing well with my grades, they thought the whole household was back to normal. And as soon as I believe like one of the last days of school came and my pops was having the most best day of his life like i don't know why he was in such a good mood that rarely happens and i just shut that shit down happily i said yeah i'm going back to mississippi state that smile went away so fast when we went back to the house this nigga came up with a list of shit that i have to pay on my own put the whip in my name and said you're on your own now and so it was more of a spiteful thing into where like he would say <clears throat> He would say like, um, it was more so like, you'll be back home. You'll be crawling back type of thing. Uh, little did he know, I already had enrolled in classes. I already had an apartment waiting on me. I had a lot of money. Uh, I was done. And so the day I was finna leave, this nigga switched up as if it was like a, a farewell moment with tears and stuff like, oh, he's growing up. The bird is leaving the nest. No, you no, you cut me off, bitch. The fuck? Like, the fuck? Yeah, yeah, you cut me off. Now we're going to make it seem like this is a sad moment. Is it because my mom's here? Is it because you're not acting? It's because you're acting like you didn't cut me off around her? I'm not really sure the answer on that. So I ended up leaving, and it was a struggle. It was a struggle. That summer was tough. Um, that three thousand, really thirty five hundred dollars that I had went down to zero within like three to four months because of a relationship I had. I was driving back and forth home. I was paying for hotels. I was paying for food. I had already knocked out some of my apartment uh, bills. And by the time October came, I had three hundred dollars. And guess what? That three hundred went. My truck broke down. My alternator went out and I had nothing. And the girl that I was with didn't give a fuck. And we was watching Ted one day when it first came out. And he broke up with his girl. And I instantly texted my girl and I said, we're done. All that money I spent to gain for like 10 months just went away in three to four months. Trying to make somebody happy. All because of tears that she had when I left. Anyway, Danny, that was fucked up. If you see this. 
she doesn't she's not gonna see this anyway um so i went through a lot uh i learned about food stamps for the first time uh tried to figure out how to budget things like that and if i fast forward it was still rough being in school so i ended up dropping out anyway so if i fast if i recap Freshman year, Mississippi State. Sophomore year, Mississippi State. Junior year, I got pulled to Jackson State. Uh, senior technically year, I get pulled. I mean, I go back to Mississippi State, but I get cut off in the process. What parent cuts off their kid for going to school is the question I ask, but whatever. So um, I end up going back, and it's a struggle, and I'm selling fake J's over eBay. I'm buying that shit from China and selling it to make rent. Um and a bunch of other things just to barely make it. And I couldn't pay my cell phone bill anymore. I couldn't pay my loan bill. I couldn't pay these this list of things that he had said I had to pay. Because it wasn't like I was paying it wasn't like I was paying these bills directly to the companies. It wasn't like he said, Okay, I'm cutting you off my line. It was you're gonna put this money in an envelope and send it to me. So I'm not paying the I'm not paying these he's the bills are paid. You know, you got a family plan. Your bill's cheaper because you put more lines on there. You you don't want to take me off of there. Um, these loans, you know, all these different things. He just wants me to pay him. So when I couldn't do that anymore, because if I paid him still, I'd have been evicted. I'm not getting evicted and I'm not coming back home. So at that time when I couldn't pay those things, I get a phone call. And when I say I got the cussing out of my life. My pops never cussed us out, maybe like once or twice, but that wasn't just something that he would do. But when I say he cussed me out to the fullest, it was bad. It was really bad. It was damn near life changing. And um, I don't know, man, it just it just do something to you. And the worst part was he once he got through yelling for the five to ten minutes, he hung up the phone, and I just knew he was finna cut my phone off. Remember, the bills paid for it. He wanted me to send him money. So when we hung up, I instantly called my grandmother, which is his mom, because she's dying at the time. Uh, this was around like 2012, 2013. So I call her just with a hunch, knowing that my phone's gonna get cut off. And my grandmother, who's usually like, oh, hey, baby, how you doing? Or make sure you eat your vegetables, this, that, and the other. You know how grandmas are. She wasn't saying none of that. She was quiet. She was like, it was one of those moments where it was like somebody was there with her. And that's when I realized she's dying of cancer. And my folks are in the room with her as I called her. Maybe she wasn't trying to make it seem like she was talking to me. Maybe they knew she wasn't trying to make her kids mad. I'm not sure what the case was, but it wasn't a good phone call. It wasn't like, you know, I was just like, yo, I hope you get better, stuff like that. I hang up. About five to ten minutes later, my signal on my phone goes to no signal. So for the first time in my life, I have no phone service. This was ten years ago. Wi-Fi wasn't like it is now. Wi-Fi was very finicky. It was like, it I won't say it barely worked, but it kind of barely worked. So I ended up going without a cell phone service for two years. Within those two years, I dropped out of school because I, I went into a second depression in my life. I couldn't focus. Like, I really flunked out, we're going to be honest. And I just quit going to school. I was like, yeah, I'm done. I can't I can't do this engineering shit. I can't do this white people school. I family issues. I I don't have no money. Like I'm fucked out here. So I ended up getting a job. And um getting that job at nukes because I really transferred. It was crazy because I already had that job, but they weren't um, giving me hours. They would clock me in for like 30 minutes and then clock me out. So what I did was um, I had like a a student job or something like that. So I was working at Nukes and I had the student job. So that was actually paying me. But like I said, I went into a depression. 
dropped out of school. Now I'm at Nukes full time. So for about a year, I'm working there full time and I'm making money. However, my body's killing me. It was like 50 hours a week. Um, no lunch breaks, no breaks. We would do 12 hour shifts Monday through Wednesday. It was bad, man. It was and it was almost like my manager was setting people up to run the clock up to blame them for running the clock up. Basically, if you're 40 plus hours over during the week, you're overtime. He would put so much stuff on our to do list to where we would have to run over 40 that he would fire us because we're running over overtime. But it's all it's a scheme. It's, a, it's how he does things. So um, I'm full time. And within that year, I get a phone call at my job because I don't have a phone. I have a phone, but it doesn't work. So um, it was my mom. At that time, I hadn't spoke to her in a year, maybe two. I don't I don't I don't remember. I know it was over a year. And she was like, your grandmother just died. And the funeral is like this week or next week or something. So I was like, okay. Hadn't spoke to none of them in in a year or two. But apparently you still have the right to say somebody in our family died and have the obligation to come. And my dumb ass came. So the worst part about it was I had to carry my grandmother on my birthday. I had to carry my grandmother's casket on my fucking birthday. Beautiful casket I might add. It was like a, like a rose gold type of casket. It was beautiful. It was very beautiful. And me and my father had like an unspoken let bygones be bygones type of thing. Which looking at it, if y'all if if any of y'all out there have like problems with your family, like real like to y'all, if it's real shit to y'all, I know people won't find my problems very serious, but if it's real to y'all, don't let it go unspoken. Don't just be men and not talk about it and think it's going to be cool because it's going to resurface. It's going to resurface. And for me, it resurfaced. But during that time, we were cool. We, you know, we got back cool or whatever. Back cool. We were never cool. But we got to a point of, okay, I'm a man. You're a man. Let's stay out of each other's way. We'll just be cool. Um. So that's what happened when my grandmother passed and you know, I, I basically spent like two, maybe two and a half years dropped out. Um, yeah, I got another job, call center. I got a promotion. I was making good money. I was finna get another promotion. Like I was doing great at this call center working for Direct TV, And something just came over me and said, oh, I can't work a nine to five for the rest of my life. And, uh, Things were going so well, but I decided to enroll back to school. And I did. I did. And when I enrolled back to school, the shit got rough again. The same problems I had before I dropped out was the same problems I had when I came back. So my nigga ass changed my major from computer engineering to electrical engineering, which is a two class difference. And those two classes was what I need because those two classes made or break you. I can't explain how hard these classes are. But let's just say this black teacher was head was so far up his ass. He thought he was better than everybody and he failed me. Um, he didn't want to help anybody do anything. He wanted you to already know it from another school or whatever the case is. And um, they end up firing him like two years later. But uh, I ended up changing my major so I didn't have to deal with him anyway. Um, electrical engineering, which was one of the best decisions I ever made. Uh, <laughs> failed a few classes multiple times. Microprocessors, I took it four times. Fuck Dr. Jones, he's a bitch ass nigga. Well, bitch ass white dude. Because he laughed at me a few times when I had to retake my classes, which comes out of pocket. Um, I failed like two other classes two times. Uh, it became just, it just wears on you because you can't make money while you're in college. And if I make a long story short, that's why I was doing talent shows and open mics to keep me sane. And I became a photographer. So I was end up I was I was uh, an engineer, a photographer. Um, I was also doing graduation pictures for people. I had two jobs on campus as well. And I worked at Nukes. So. Um, <laughs> uh, George Robinson says, D, think outside the box. I appreciate you, man. 
Shout out to George Robinson, man. He be showing love. So um, I went through all that, and let's just say I prevailed. Let's just say I prevailed. Um, I ended up graduating in 2017, and uh, things was all cool until, and we'll get into that until another time, because this is the moment where we start going into when I decided to move in to Atlanta. The Atlanta plan was supposed to happen like 2012, but 2017, finally graduated, I had my knee surgery, so I could finally like walk. I tore my knee in 09, 010. I didn't get the surgery until 2017, well, 2016 in December. So things are finally going well, graduated, all these other things, but now it's time to get to Atlanta and we'll go to that story another time. So it's not as much traumatic or trauma in this part two, but just to continue along, I did want y'all to know the rest of that because the family problems did not stop just right there. Me and my folks fell off a second time. So um, I'll let y'all marinate on that. I appreciate y'all for listening. Hopefully I didn't rush through it too much because there's so many details. I don't even know if I really want to get into it. Plus it could be a little emotional. I'm not trying to get there either. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the Young Thug stuff tomorrow or the next few days or whatever the case is. Uh, I had some plans that changed because of how I'm feeling uh, right now. I'm not my best. I don't know if y'all can tell. But, um, yeah, so we're going to get into the Young Thug stuff later. The trial, all those good things, the jury, everything like that, other good fun stuff. So I hope y'all enjoyed the story. Uh, shout out to George Robinson, man. You're the dopest. Appreciate you for commenting, um, as always. And y'all, please be safe out there. Love y'all so much. And thank y'all for growing my YouTube channel. I never thought that people would ever <laughs> actually want to hear me talk about stuff or my life. Who the fuck cares about my life? But apparently people do. Usually you think as a rapper, you have to take the traditional rapper route. I guess that's not the case anymore. Excuse me. So anyway, um, we're going to get out of here. Um, I appreciate y'all. Love y'all so much. I love y'all so much. I love y'all so much, man. So George deuces. Everybody deuces. Y'all be safe. And we're out of here. <laughs>